the Corps of Engineers. Engineers must be oriented and adapted to a multitude of tasks. The Army Corps of Engineers is raising the dam by 8 meters. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers lays out their response plan. We provide infrastructure assessment, temporary roofing, temporary emergency power. We help with debris assessment and removal operations. We also work with temporary housing. And he'll tell you there's no end to the types of services the engineers provide. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Building Strong Buffalo podcast, our first mini-sode. This is the place to get to know the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Buffalo District, our people, and our stories. My name is Jess Levinson, your host and public affairs specialist with the district. So a few days ago, we recorded a podcast with some of our female civil engineers. We got a lot of positive feedback. Uh, I had a lot of fun having that discussion. Everyone learned a lot. And I want everyone hearing this right now to listen to that episode. And if you already did, re-listen to it. It was a great time. It was an hour long. And uh, we learned a lot. And this time, we're just going to do a bite-sized episode. And don't forget to tell us what you liked, what you want to hear more about, what you want us to cover next. Let us know in the comments. Today, I'm in the field with civil engineer Victoria Toundrow. Toundrow, how do you pronounce Toundrow. it? Toundrow, yeah. Toundrow. We're in Sodus Point, New York, where we're repairing the East Breakwater in Great Sodus Bay. You'll be able to find out more about that project on all our platforms. I took a lot of photos and videos today, so watch out for that. But today, I want to continue our conversation about women in engineering. So, welcome, Tori. Thank you for being our guest today. Thanks, Jess, for having me. Uh, my name is Victoria Tondro. I graduated from the University of Buffalo with a bachelor's degree in civil engineering back in May of 2019. Um, and I've been with the Corps since June of 2019. So. Nice. Um, yeah, so you're you're a uh, another UB graduate. We had three of them on the last podcast. Yeah, so. it seems like a lot of people in the district are UB graduates, so it's it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's cool that that a lot of people have that connection. Uh, so the icebreaker question for for you is, if you could be on a reality TV show, which one would you choose and why? Uh, I would have to choose Survivor. Uh, watched it every week growing up. Uh, I think it would be cool to to test my limits mentally, physically. Uh, yeah, I have to go with Survivor. Nice. I So I was actually thinking what I would answer for this yesterday. And it was between Survivor and um, The Challenge, if you know that show from MTV. No, I, I've never watched that one. <laughs> so it was a lot of the, the intense competition yes, style one. Yep. But I love that there's strategy involved in it. Yes, and that's why I like, I love playing like Monopoly and stuff like that. So it's, it's a physical game, but you also have the, the mental aspect of it. So it's fun. Cool. First question for you, uh, same question we asked on the last episode. What inspired you to become an engineer? Uh, you, you can also talk about the first experience that made you think, I want to be an engineer. Yeah, so uh, growing up, my dad used to fix houses, fix up houses and stuff. So I'd always help him gut the houses, renovate them, put in new flooring. Um, and I can always remember taking down the sheetrock and seeing the two by fours put together with nails. And it always fascinated me how you can put it together this and that, and all of a sudden you have a, a standing structure. Um, so from an early age, probably 10, 12, um, at first I wanted to be an architect, and then I realized I don't like drawing, um, <laughs> and I was good at math, so civil engineering was the way way to go for me. So Cool. And uh, so your dad would bring you to things that he was working on and just show you you know, how, how it all worked? Um, so he actually worked at a nuclear power plant, so he just flipped houses on the side. Oh, wow. Um, so it was kind of like his side hobby that I would go help him do on the weekends and stuff like that. So. He didn't he didn't bring you to the plant and show you, hey, here's the core <laughs> reactor. No, like, no, okay. no. <laughs> they didn't have a bring your kids to work day. <laughs> uh, next question in uh, the main focus. What is it like to be a woman in engineering? Um, and you can talk about your experience in college, um, your experience with the Corps of Engineers, mm -hmm. and, you know, take it away, any aspect you want to hit on for that. Yeah, so uh, taking it back to college, Akira and I actually graduated together. Um, so like she said, our class was maybe 10% female at best, um, which looking back, I do remember there being a lot of females, but I do remember I always sat next to, to guys, there'd be a group of us girls, and then... 
everybody else's guys. Um, which, for the most part, the vast majority of the guys that we went to classes with uh, definitely su- were supportive of having women in classes and in other project groups. Um, however, being a woman in a group of all guys, I did find that you have to advocate for yourself and some of your ideas more than a guy would have to. Um, I remember one project, I suggested something, and it kind of got turned down, and then two days later, somebody suggested the same thing, and we ended up doing it. He was a guy. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of something that I learned that you have to advocate for yourself, push harder if you want your ideas to be heard, because sometimes they aren't heard the first time. Um, going into working for the core, uh, I'm still at the beginning of my career, uh, and being in the construction, it's definitely different. A lot of meetings I'm in, a lot of project sites I'm on, I'm the only female there, um, which doesn't really bother me, but it definitely, I don't know, it's it's difficult sometimes um, because I feel like I get talked over sometimes. It's definitely a field heavily dominated by men. Um, I think being the only female on site um, can be difficult, but there's only been one other site that have actually had female operators on it. It was, it was cool because I showed up and there was a female there. I'm like, awesome, I'm not the only one. Yeah. Um, but it's also a feeling that I don't get very often because a lot of it's male operators, male project managers, male... Uh, quality control guys, male engineers for the construction companies. Like in our own office, we have four females in the office, which is super nice. But outside of the office, I don't really get that female to female interaction. It's a lot of me dealing with guys and talking to guys and and stuff like that. So. And is part of that because you work in the field quite often, and and from what we heard on the last episode, especially being out in the field. Yeah. Um, it's skewed towards males. Yeah, most of my job is being out on project sites basically all summer long, five days a week. Once we get into December like we are now, I'm still on the field about three days a week um, checking up on projects depending on how close they are. Um, so you definitely, in the office, walking around, there's definitely a lot more females. It, it doesn't seem to be a, a vast majority being male, but out on the project sites, I'm definitely, I notice that I'm the only female out there. Um, and it goes back to to college, sometimes in meetings, I have to advocate my ideas more if I have a certain idea. And once once you do advocate for yourself, do you feel like you're heard? Yeah, definitely. And I do find that even being out on site, if one of the guys comes out here, they kind of listen to him right away. And so going onto a new site, I feel like I have to kind of warm the construction workers up to me to a certain extent um, to let them know that I do know what I'm talking about. Um, but for the most part, I've been very fortunate. Um, all the guys that I work with out on the sites have been great um, to work with. I haven't experienced any sexism. However, I do know other females that work in construction groups that have. So it definitely still is an issue. It's a lot better than it was 40 years ago, 50 years ago, when you think about it. Um, but we definitely still have a ways to go uh, when it comes to sexism in the workplace. Um, especially in male-dominated fields. Yeah, so. thanks for sharing that. It's not yeah. an always an easy thing to talk yeah. about. So ha- is, how has the core done a good job helping you just in general in your role and career, maybe specifically with um, these kinds of things that we're talking about now? Are there challenges that you've had to overcome? You know, what what's that situation like? Um, I've only been with the core for a year and a half, and I really haven't faced any um, major challenges when it comes to being a woman in the workplace. Um, but I remember getting hired and right off the back, all the guys in the office were, if any of the contractors give you trouble, you let us know, we'll take care of it. So it's very nice to have um, a good group of people to work with that I know they have my back if I ever need it. Um, hopefully I won't need that extra support, but it's nice knowing that if I do, they're, they're right there for me, to advocate for me, to help me advocate for myself if I need it. So That's awesome. Yeah, yeah yep, that's it's definitely really great. great. Yeah. And then uh, just doing a, a bit of research about you before the podcast, I saw that you played soccer and you played lacrosse as well. And that was throughout like high school and yeah, college, right? Yep. So my question is, how can you take, you know, team sports and what lessons did you learn from that that you can take into the workplace as uh, maybe advocating for yourself being like, I need the ball, yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um... I mean, especially in construction, I feel like it's definitely a team sport. Um, You have to work with a contractor, you have to work with project management, you have to work with our office. Um, So there's a lot of teamwork that goes into constructing your project, making sure that it's done properly, um, done on time, within budget. So with that, 
it's great working in a team because you're not it's not one thing is up to just you but yeah it's it's nice to be in a team and it's definitely a team oriented career the job sites are always team oriented okay so lastly tori is there anything you want to add before we uh, do the outro I think I mentioned it earlier, um, is that things are getting better than they were 20 years ago. I mean, before I was born, I'm, I'm not that old. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely getting better because you watch some of these movies about female engineers in like the 60s and 70s and, and how they were treated. Um, and it's definitely better now than it is depicted in the movies. And I'm sure the movies only cover half of it. Um, but there still definitely is a way to go to to reach gender equality in the workplace and not even just closing the wage gap it's on how women are treated and them just instantly being taken seriously and not um not assuming because they're a woman that they're not as smart as a male engineer all right tori thank you so much for being on the building strong buffalo podcast first mini-sode and for sharing yourself with the world I want everyone listening to share this episode and the last episode with your coworkers, friends, and family. I think it will inspire growth, break down barriers, and change the world for the better. As always, we're living, working, and engineering in a time of tremendous change. And the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is adapting and innovating to deliver engineering solutions to our nation's toughest challenges. Thank you for listening, and stay on.